Income Tax 2023-2024. Reporting Self-Employment Tax Tax Software Example. Get ready and some coffee. Because if you try telling the IRS auditor a joke about taxes, they won't depreciate it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because... Apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point here. Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang tax man, living in Beverly Hills 90210, no dependents to start off with, we've got the Schedule C business flowing through to line 8, let's follow that flow through, going on over to the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, having an income statement format, income minus expenses, income at the 120000 the expenses, which are basically the business deductions currently at the 20000 net income at the 100000 which flows through through to the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part number one additional income line number three business income or loss there's the 100,000 which rolls through to the form 1040 line number eight additional income from schedule one 100,000 also if we go back to that schedule C and this is our point of focus this time the net income flows through to the Schedule SE, known as the Self-Employment Tax, calculating the Social Security and Medicare currently at the 14129 That flows into the Schedule 2, Additional Taxes, Part Number 2, Other Taxes, Line Number 4, Self-Employment Tax, there's the 14129 which flows into the Form 1040, Page Number 2, we're on line number 23, other taxes, including self-employment tax. There's the 14,129. Also, if we go back to that Schedule SE, we can see that half of that 14,129, 7,065 is pulled out here and flows through to the Schedule 1 again additional income and adjustments to income but this time page number two which is part number two adjustments to income line 15 the deductible part of self-employment tax there's the 7065 so if we go back to the page one of the form 1040 we can see that we have the income flowing through the net income the 100,000 we've got the above the line deduction half of the self-employment tax 7065 for the AGI adjusted gross income 92 2,935. We then have the standard deduction for the single filer, 13,850. We've got the qualified business income, form 8,995, the 15,817. And that gives us a subtotal for taxable income, finally, of the 63,268. Page number two, then calculating the tax, the federal income tax using the ordinary income progressive tax structure. But we also had the self-employment tax, Social Security, Medicare, 14,129 to get the total tax currently at the 23,357. All right, let's go back to page number one. We have recapped this multiple times when looking at the practice problem, but we want to focus more this time on the calculations and some of the complications of the self-employment tax. So let's go back to this Schedule C. And we can see, of course, once again, that we have an income statement. So anytime we have income on the income statement, income is typically bad for taxes, right? So for taxes, we know that we're going to have to deal with 
the calculation of the federal income taxes. That's what we're used to with the Schedule C, even with W-2 income, focusing in on the taxes for the federal income taxes. And if I check that out, going back to the data input for the W-2 income, note that if I was going to enter data for W-2 income for the 100,000, let's say, then I would have to populate the amount of withholdings, which is really important for tax preparation because the federal income taxes are too complicated to get the taxes exactly right, which is why the withholdings are designed to over withhold so that you get a refund. Not because we're trying to make people happy just to get a refund, but because we're trying to avoid getting hit by the sticks of penalties and interest. But you can see that the Social Security and Medicare are basically being calculated by the system automatically. That's the 6,200. And if I pull out the trustee calculator, what's being calculated here automatically is going to be the 100,000 times the 0.062. That's 6,200. And then the 100,000 times the uh, 0.0145. There's the 1,450. So th those are the withholdings. Now, those are on the W-2, but we don't really think much about them because usually they don't have a big impact on the calculation of the taxes, given the fact that, that they've already been paid. This is more of an informational type of thing, usually. And, uh, and so, but if I don't have those withholdings taken out by the employer, then the government is going to want us to pay them on our side of things and not only pay just the employee portion because there's also a payment made by the employer so in other words this amount reported on the w-2 is matched both for the social security and medicare by a payment of the employer so we have to mirror a similar situation then for the schedule c so the irs is going to say okay we want to force the schedule c business to pay Social Security and Medicare. How would they do that? Well, you might say, let's force the Schedule C people to pay themselves W-2 income. This is not what happens, but you can imagine this is a possible solution that they could have came up with, right? They'd say, hey, look, we're, just like a C corporation has to pay the, 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 employer, the CEO, for example, W-2 income subject to self-employment tax and whatnot, uh, or subject to Social Security and Medicare, we can force the Schedule C business to pay themselves W-2 income doing the withholding and then paying their side of, of the Social Security and Medicare's payroll taxes. But that's too complicated to do because if payroll's a pain, even if you're just paying yourself and you had no employees, that would be a pain to do. So small businesses like gig work and whatnot, you might discourage the market from from conducting those businesses if you were to do that. So then there's, you could say, okay, well, look, we, we're not going to say you have to issue yourself a W-2. We'll just say that the net income, the bottom line, is basically kind of like your W-2 income and we'll calculate the self-employment tax based on that net income so you don't have to deal with payroll. That's the easy thing to do. But when we count, so that means that the net income is what's going to be subject to in essence, the equivalent of payroll taxes. However, we're going to think of you as the business owner, as both the employee and the employer, because obviously, again, if you owned your own business, you would be paying both sides, the employee and employer of the payroll taxes for Social Security and Medicare. And that is, in essence, what's happening over here on the Schedule SE. So you can see that the Schedule SE is applied to a particular Social Security number, not just a tax return itself. So there's a couple things we have to worry about here. One, do we have the calculation for self-employment tax correct? And two, is it applied to the correct Social Security number, which isn't a problem if you only have one person on the tax return. But for married couples, then you have two people on the tax return. And you want to make sure that the proper social security number is being tied out to because that will impact the benefits that people will be uh, receiving. We might touch on that in a second. But the general idea of the calculation, you've got the 100,000 here. And then here it says we're going to multiply times the 0.9, uh, 0.9235. So it actually reduces the 100,000 a little bit to 92,350. You can see that we have a cap here 
this is the cap for social security and then basically the calculations on it are going to be the the social security at the 12.4 percent what is the 12.4 percent that's basically the 0.062 times two for both the employee and employer portion so now in other in essence we're at the 92 350 times the 0.124 that's where we're getting that 11 451 and then we've got the 92 350 times the 0.029 which is the 0.0145 times 2 that's where we get this if we add those two together 11 451 we're getting this amount now again you might say well why don't i just add those two together why don't i just take the 14 the the 0.1 4124 plus the 0.01029. Sorry about that. I'll take this amount and multiply that times the 92. I could take that and just multiply it times 92, 350. You can, right? You get to the same answer. But the problem is that there's a cap on part the part that's related to Social Security. And if your income is high, you end up having kind of an added progressive component system to the medicare component which means you have to kind of break them out which makes it a little bit more complicated but as a general rule you can add those two together and say that's going to be basically your self-employment tax if you're not over the cap of the 160,200, and that's how we're getting to this uh 14 129 now that of course is going to have a significant impact on the tax calculation of page two here so now we're not only dealing with the federal income taxes we've got this self-employment tax often confusing people so if you're a tax preparer and you're dealing with schedule c businesses this will drive them crazy because they're going to say hey look i thought i had to pay federal income taxes they don't really understand the social security and medicare component because possibly they were w-2 employees and the withholdings were just taken out of their paycheck and the only part of it they ever really had to deal with is the federal income tax because that's the component that basically gave them a refund so we kind of have to explain you might be beneficial to try to be able to explain this to a client for example uh so so that they can understand what is happening here all right so let's say let's imagine that we go over the cap to complicate this what does that mean that we have this cap so let's go into the schedule c and let's say that we bring this up to 220,000. so now if i go back on over we can see that the schedule c is now has 220,000 minus 20,000 200,000 of income if i go to my schedule uh se now notice there's a cap of the 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 the, the it multiplied at times the 0.9 uh 235 but there's a cap on the social security side so instead of me paying the 184 700 times times the 0.124 we're only paying 160,200 times the 0.124 to get to the social security component of the 19865 the medicare doesn't have a cap so it's at the 184 700 times the 0.029 for the 5356 so when you have higher income individuals they're going to hit that cap and you've you've got to kind of be aware of that also for planning purposes now this often bothers people that they hit a cap because you might say hey look taxes should go up as you make more income you shouldn't hit a cap and then you don't pay any more taxes after you hit the cap that seems weird why does that happen it's because we don't really understand how we're going to be dealing with social security it has moved from a benefit program to help people out who weren't able to save for retirement because they lived longer than their life expectancy and whatnot or something like that or they had a problem or whatever and we're trying to help people too it's a government funded almost communistic socialistic retirement program that everybody pays into and then we depend on the government paying it back out in retirement and that's why the rate is so high right it's a pretty high rate of tax because we're kind of thinking of it as though we have now like a government funded retirement program for everybody which would mean 
that normally if you pay more money into the retirement program, it should increase the amount of benefits that you're going to get uh, at the, the retirement point. But in reality, what happens, of course, is that because they're trying to mix these two things together, it, it ends up that the more money you pay into the retirement program, the benefits that you get go down and uh, as the, uh, you get a lower benefit as you put more in money into the retirement program until you don't get any benefit at all. And so that's why you end up with a, with a cap. So again, I think the answer to that is, I would think the answer to that is that we're going to hit the wall on social security at some point and possibly need to veer back to the idea that it's a, it's, we, we should allow people to keep their money, invest their own money, saving for retirement, having a safety net, which should be a lot cheaper such as the like we do with the Medicare tax, which is helping people out that didn't save that didn't have the ability to save for retirement, not as like a government funded retirement program. But we'll see what happens. Something's going to have to happen, though. But that's the idea. So if, when people, you, you know, that question comes up a lot. And so you might want to have whatever you whatever you think about that as your rationale, just as a talking point for the taxes. Now I'm going to increase it even more. So now I'm at 420,000. Just to note that the Medicare tax also has kind of a, a tier up tax, but it works a little bit differently. So in other words, let's let's go here. Now we're on the Schedule C, 420,000 minus the 20,000. The Schedule SE caps out the Social Security at 160,000, uh, but the Medicare is still calculated normally. However, if you go to like the schedule two, then you can see in the other taxes, we've got the self-employment tax and we've got line 11 additional Medicare tax. So it's kind of like a progressive tax, but the progressive tax system is being broken out on form 8959 progressive, meaning you have different tax layers and you pay more tax in essence when your income goes above a certain threshold, which is based on your filing status. So we've got uh, 8959 here additional medicare tax and you can check out uh, the calculation for that so as the income goes up then you could be subject to the additional medicare tax which i believe is 0.9 uh, percent now note that this all becomes a lot more complex if we have more than one business or possibly if we have a, a married couple on uh, the return so let me just show you that let's go back on over and let's say that this was back at uh, 120,000, but then we had another business. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be uh, number two business. I won't put in all the details of it, which I probably should, but I, I'll just say this is going to be 60,000. And then we had uh, expenses of 10,000 for a net of 50,000. So now if I go back on over, We've got Schedule C. We have two Schedule Cs because we have two different businesses. So if we look at that, then we've we've got the 100,000 from the Schedule C one, and we've got the 50,000 from Schedule C two. Those two are applied to the same Social Security number in this case, and therefore they're coming into the same uh, self-employment tax calculation at the 150,000, which makes sense because we have to apply those caps and the progressive tax system per income subject to self-employment tax per social security number so that we can apply the caps, right? So here's the calculation uh, on that. If you had a loss on one of the businesses, then let's say this was uh, 70,000. So now we would have uh, the business schedule C business number one, had income of 100,000 and the business number two has a loss of 10,000 that would then pull into the schedule SE at the 90,000 subject to the to to the self employment tax. All right, now you also have kind of a funny situation if you have W2 employment and self employment tax. So let's go back on over and let's remove the second one and say okay, what if I had W-2 income, W-2 income of, let's just start off with 50,000. Now I'm already paying some social security and Medicare, but only the employee portion over here. And if I go back on over, now I have, now I have the, the 
50000 for my income here that's not subject to self-employment tax. And on the self-employment tax, I have the 100000 paying in here. So for the W-2 income, notice I only paid half the self-employment tax because only the employee portion were on, on this 100000 I played the full amount. However, what, what happens with this cap? Because this cap is applied per social security number. So in other words, if my income over here on W-2 wages was like, uh, was like 200,000, now I hit the cap over here. I've already paid all of my social security uh, wages, although I only paid half of it because I was an employee over here. So, so you would think that even though I have other income on the Schedule C, that there's going to have to be a, a cap that will be hit, right? So now if I go back on over, I can see I have uh, the 200,000. And if I go to the Schedule C, there's the 120. That gives me the 100,000. But then if I go to the Schedule SE, now I've got the 100,000. There's the 92,350. We've got the 160,000. Line 8A, total Social Security wages tips uh, from the W-2. There's the 160,000. So in essence, it's saying, hey, look, we already paid to this Social Security number uh, up to the cap of 160,200. Notice that we only paid, we, this was kind of a benefit here because the W-2 income wages are subject to only half of the Social Security as an employee, whereas if they did it the other way around, they made us pay from the from the Schedule C, we would have had to pay both the employee and employer portion, right? But in any case, it goes down. So now we're not paying any Social Security more on the self-employment because we already paid it on the wages, but we still have the Medicare taxes that are being paid uh, that are going in. So that's going to be that general idea. Now, we also have the problem of a joint return. So let's go back on over and let's say I remove this one and let's say that they're married. So we're going to say uh, he get married. Now we're married filing joint Jane uh, Taxman. So so now if I go back on over and we have the Schedule C, if the Schedule C was just for Adam, then then we would have the same situation, 120,000 minus the 20,000, 100,000. The Schedule SE is applied to one social security number. So although for federal income tax calculations or for federal and self-employment tax calculations for the married couple, it doesn't really matter who it's assigned to here in terms of what you're gonna pay, or it may not matter uh, if you're not over the cap or the threshold. But it does matter for return for benefits because now this whole 100,000 is being applied to this social security number as opposed to the spouse's social security number. And we have the, the calculation coming through in the same fashion that we started with originally. But the point is now all of that is being assigned to Adam, which will impact Adam's benefits and not his uh, spouse's benefits. But what if what if there you could have a situation where there were two businesses again? So let's say that both Adam and uh, Jane, I think, is what had had businesses. So let's say the next one, another business. So business number two uh, was for the spouse, and let's say it was uh, that seventy. Let's say sixty thousand, and then we had the expenses of ten thousand so now if i go back on over we've got two schedule c's again there's the original and then the second one but the second one is applied to the spouse now so and it has ten thousand or fifty thousand of income so the schedule se is not being combined together in this case we have two of them the the one hundred thousand here uh, pulling through and then the second one which is applied to a separate social security number now you now if they were combined together you might come out to the same the same totals if you didn't hit the caps because now you have separate caps which is kind of a mess but uh it's properly being allocated to the two the two people uh in this case now for the benefit calculations 
So those two amounts then pull in to to uh, here to, 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 to the from the schedule SEs that are pulling in for the other taxes. Okay, so then you also could have a situation where let's say that we had delete this one. Now this is dependent on whether it's a community property state or not, for example. Uh, but let's say that that we can we can say it's a joint. They both own it and it's like a community property state. And so now what we would like to do is say, hey, look, we're married. They, we're going to split everything basically equally. Uh, we're, we ha if we have the capacity to do that possibly in a community property state, then what we would the easiest thing to do is say we would like to have one Schedule C that would look like this. So here's our Schedule C. But then on the Schedule SE, because we marked it as joint, we now have two Schedule SEs which are breaking out the income evenly between the two individuals. And so, so now the two individuals are being allocated uh, allocated that the amount breaking out. It's going to come out to the same total between the two of them that pulls in uh, to the taxes on the Schedule 2, the 14,130. But now it's being broken out to the two individuals for the self-employment calculations which impact the benefits. Now note that this gets messy if they're going over the threshold because now the threshold for self-employment is 160,200 per social security number. So for example, if I had a lot of income here, let's say this was 420,000. Now, if I go back on over the Schedule C, 420 minus 20 is 400,000. The Schedule SE now has 200,000 applied to both of them. Uh, but the 200,000 is hitting the cap of the 160,000 on both sides. So now, so now because we broke it in half, that cap is resulting in more taxes being paid, right? Because now each of them can go up to that cap of 160,000 versus Jane also has a cap of 160,000. So in other words, if I go back on over and say, okay, what's happening to my self-employment tax? I'm paying 50,442. Whereas if I was to go back on over and change it to, it was only applied to the taxpayer and not to the spouse, then I would only be paying 30,578. Why? Because now with the Schedule SE, the 400,000 is being applied to one social security number, which is hitting the 160,200 cap. So if you have, it's kind of a, a tricky situation with married individuals because you'd like to be able to allocate possibly the income to the two individuals uh, so, because that'll impact their benefits. But if they have a substantial amount of income, they might end up paying a substantially more taxes because you have a larger cap for the self-employment. So uh, the other thing that could happen with married individuals, you might not be able to do because you're not in a community property state. So you might have to do either a partnership return, which gives you ability to allocate to the two spouses in any way that you want, or possibly a joint venture situation, in which case you're going to take your Schedule C possibly and break it out, applying the two Schedule Cs to the two individuals, breaking out each line item on the Schedule C. But you end up with the same problem, which is that you, you might, if you're under $160,200, you might come up to some planning scenarios if you're close to retirement, for example, if you have one spouse that doesn't have much money that's paid into Social Security and Medicare and therefore not subject to many benefits, you might say, I would like to allocate more money to them if they're legitimately working in the business and whatnot, then you'd like to allocate some of the money to them so that they get more of a benefit possibly applied to their Social Security number upon retirement. Uh, so that could be a kind of a strategy that you can put into play. But if you're earning more than 160,200, that strategy could backfire because you're gonna end up paying possibly more taxes because these two 
the two people will have two caps of 160200 uh, which means you might be paying more taxes into Social Security, which might not be worth, worth the added benefits you're getting from the Social Security. So it gets kind of into somewhat of a messy calculation. But if you're in that situation, you can you can dive into that in, in more detail and do so, run some scenarios with it, you know.